Hey, Greg Kemble here. I teach English at Yuba. I was asked to make a couple short videos that show how I approached a couple sections of the OEI rubric. In this video, I'll show you how I approached section C7, which involves feedback, explaining how students will receive feedback, and ideally walking them through how to get that feedback and uh, what to do with it. As I said, I'm an English teacher, so the most important feedback I give is on their essays. And that feedback is pretty extensive. There's a grade. Uh, sometimes that's all the students are really interested in. Uh, but I also write comments uh, in the margins and at the end of their papers. Now, these comments are meant not only to explain the grade, though they do that, but they're there to offer instruction, uh, giving them things to consider for the next assignment. In Canvas, there's a space for the grade and comments, but I don't want students to think that the stuff I write in that comments box is all that they're getting. So I have three ways to make sure that they know, uh, first, that there are comments on their paper, and second, how to get at those comments. So uh, first, I use the comments field in Canvas to give instructions on how to download and if they want to print a copy of their essay with my comments. A second, uh, perhaps more important, I've created a couple screencast videos. Uh, one walks them through retrieving their essay with my comments, and the other explains how to handle the comments on the paper. Now, I'm not going to play the videos for you here, that would take too long, uh, but I'll put links at the end of the video if you want to take a look. And then a third, for those who somehow miss the other two, and they do, uh, I'll also post an announcement that lets them know that I've finished grading their essays and pointing them to the first two things I mentioned, the comments field in Canvas and the videos. Okay. Well, let me close with three quick tips that you might find useful. First, uh, as I said, I made videos to explain how to get the feedback, but written instructions with screenshots can be just as effective. And if you're using Canvas more or less the way it was designed, you may be able to just link to a page in the student guide. Like here are some instructions for students to sign up for meetings through the calendar scheduler. It's clearer than any video I could make. Second, don't front load your instructions. I've seen instructors who explain everything in the syllabus, but fire hose instructions at the beginning of a course don't stick. In the beginning, students, especially students new to Canvas, they just don't have enough context to understand what you're even talking about. And even if they do, they won't remember everything you've showed them, and they may not even remember that you did show them. So, for example, I introduce how to use the discussions tool right before the actual discussion assignment. I tell them how to submit an essay right before it's due. I tell them how to retrieve the essay with my comments right after I've graded it. And finally, uh, remind them often. On every assignment, uh, every discussion, every essay, I include uh, at the end of the assignment a link to the explanation I gave them earlier in the semester. It's simple enough for me to do. Uh, after the first time, it's a simple cut and paste, but it really helps. If a student can't remember how to submit an essay, for example, having the instructions right there saves her the time uh, and, to be honest, the stress of having to hunt for the explanation. Okay, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me uh, and I'll see you around.